looks as though has been swindling the flat. She's recently been paying nothing. Paying nothing at all? Yes. Oh, wow. Hello, it's Jared. I had confirmed to Jared that everyone knew they were supposed to be out today, but her communication to her flatmates may not have been as clear as she made out. Oh, this isn't just a little bit of stuff left lying around. Uh, this is a lot. This is clearly someone that hasn't been told we're coming in. If someone knew what was going on, they would have at least moved some of their collectibles. There's a recent meal. There's a pizza box. Clearly shows to us they're still living in here. This is disappointing. I'll need to make a quick call to Kat to find out if she's actually aware of how much stuff is in here and whose rooms are actually who. This split-level house has been home to various different tenants, but has recently been sold to new owners. I need to make sure that it's all good and ready to go to the new owner. I will not hand over a property that is not exactly the way it should be left. Curtains are down in here. Not sure why. Honestly, and they look like they've been down for a while because they're all screwed up and revolting. The cobwebs that hold it up because there's enough under there. This hole here. Apparently somebody got thrown through the wall, as you do, you know, because you're just larking around. And um, this has been sort of plastered by an idiot. From plastered idiots downstairs to filthy ones in the kitchen. Or should that be vomitorium? Oh, my God! Look at the kitchen! Look at the sink! Look the pigs! Someone's done some damage. Half the pantry door. Yeah, that's just exactly where it should be sitting. It's right round the corner. The unusual arrangements of various items seem almost purposefully designed to provoke, even down to an irritatingly placed fedora hat on a chair in an otherwise empty upstairs room. There's a nice chair and a hat. And a hole in the wall. And another hole. That's unusual, isn't it? I find that really unusual that there's a hole in the wall here. <laughs> like I find it really unusual the shit all through this cupboard. Things only get more unusual in the attic, but judging by the lack of motivation evident in the rest of the house, perhaps unsurprising. What's all the tin foil? What's that? What's this? It looks like some kind of makeshift lighting rig used to facilitate the growing of indoor plants, possibly cannabis. Yeah, how would that get wet? Unless you'd been watering your plants. I can't wait to have a discussion with him. He's going to think that I am the bitch from hell, and I will be. She's a little chilly round the willy this morning, I can tell you. But it's a major emergency. Freezing temperatures caused a water cylinder to burst and flood a small unit, and Prue is meeting with property owner Brenda to assess the damage and find out what happened. The tenants got home and said there's water everywhere. It looks like the hot water cylinder was blowing. And when we got here, it was a huge job. Water was everywhere. The unit has been emptied of all furniture. And with the water valve turned off, Prue needs to assess the damage. And here's the offending beast. So what do you believe occurred with the cylinder? With a heavy frost, the vent pipe gets a solid piece of ice in it. Hot water cylinders, they, with the heat of the water, they expand. Yes. Or they, it can't go out the vent pipe, it can't expand anywhere, so it blows the cylinder. And this is what happened here today. And this is water right the way through all the rooms. It's just ruined. And it's crashed through the bottom. Not good. How far up would it have gone, Bren? You can see here, papers bubbling. Papers bubbling here. So it's gone up about that far. And out here, we're still swimming. The damage is major, but with the tenants unhurt and safely ensconced in another property, Prue and Bren do what the cylinder couldn't and let off some steam. In the water. <laughs> in the water. <laughs> Giving into madness may seem tempting, but there's a lot of work to do before this unit is shipshape again. I don't think we need to take our shoes off. Sue White is due to hand over a two-storey weatherboard house in Hamilton to a new owner. Property's sold. New owner takes over on Friday, and it needs to be clean and tidy when he takes it over. And this certainly isn't the, the standard. The tenant who was living there had left it in a topsy-turvy state. 
even growing plants in the attic instead of out in the garden, where it would have been easier. Yeah, how would that get wet? Unless you'd been watering your plants. The new occupants probably don't want to spend their first night washing someone else's dishes and fixing the floor. So Sue had to arrange for a speedy spruce. Going back over to my property in Hillcrest, the house was left in quite a sad, sorry state. So I'm just going back over to make sure that everything's been done by my tradies and it's all ready to hand over to the new owner. And Sue's tradies haven't disappointed. Wow, what a difference! So these curtains here were all just thrown all over the floor. Yeah. So it's been plastered, it's just ready for its paint now, but I mean, that's going to come up, you won't even see it. It's a professional job. You couldn't walk on this floor, it was so sticky, you were like... <coughs> this looks amazing. I'm happy to hand something over like this. Everything is clean and smells beautiful. Stove all done. Look at that. It's like a bloody new one. It's like a new one upstairs as well. Oh no, this is cool. I just about want to do the happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually see through the shower door now. It was just grime. All down there. Ooh. Even the attic's been swept clean. Up here was just cardboard, <laughs> tin foil. Barring one artefact left over from the house's possibly nefarious past. This sort of temporary light thing that had been set up, no idea what for, of course. They just said just to leave it for the time being and they'll deal with it. Oh, this looks a hundred percent better. I'm absolutely wrapped about the way the property looks now. My cleaners and that have done an amazing job. You know, you walk in and the smell is just like, this is clean. As for the tenant, well, I'm just going to go down the normal track with him and um, I'll just hold his bond and then take him to court. Sue's nothing if not a property manager of her word, and that includes the promise to hand over a house in nothing less than mint condition. So that was a really good outcome, a really, really good day at the office. I'm happy with it all, everything's done, and now I can hand it over and feel really, really good about it. Jared Buck from Trust Property in Wellington is at a house that should be empty. Hello, it's Jared. Jared has instructed main leaseholder to disband the flat after weeks of unpaid rent. It's disappeared, but doesn't seem to have passed the message on, and attempts to contact her are unsuccessful. Hey, you know what's good? So Jared decides to get in touch with the other leaseholder, who's been relying on to make the rent payments. Um, we've been having some communication with last week uh, about um, what's going on with the flatmates. Um, what, what has she kept you up to date with? Um, so not a hell of a lot to be honest. It confirms that and one flatmate have already moved out, but thought he'd been given permission to stay on an extra week or two until new tenants sign on. Why the other remaining flatmate is still here, however, can't explain. The room that is second on the left looks nice and tidy. It doesn't look like the message has got through to this person at all. This is the room of one of the flatmates who accused of not paying rent. But it looks more like a man cave than squatter's den, which leads Jared to conclude... It looks as though has been swindling the flat. I'm pretty certain that you've still been paying your rent to her. She's recently been paying nothing. Paying nothing at all? Yes. Oh, wow. Because his name is also on the lease, he's in the firing line for rent recovery as well as You need to start getting on to and questioning her about where that money is that you've paid her. Claims he has bank statements that prove he's been paying rent into the flat account. But even so, he'll have to go through the tenancy tribunal process to clear his name. Sometimes when uh, people are just a little bit too trusting, especially when it's a flatmate. As soon as we get the out, we'll be back on the market and hopefully we can get new tenants in for the owner pretty quick. So, and out here we're still swimming. Crew Morrell of Good Girls Property Management in Christchurch was called to a property after freezing temperatures caused a water cylinder to explode. It's just ruined. And it's crashed through the bottom. 
Not good. The tenants were evacuated, and after assessing the damage, crews back to check on the unit and prepare the ground for the tenants' return. So we're putting the new carpets down. She was as damp as damp, wasn't she, doll? How do you do? Oh. I'm Prue. Newly acquainted with Alistair the carpet layer, Prue checks out progress with Bren. This was the offensive area. So this just blew through and she was savage. So savage, there was no way to salvage the carpets after 180 plus litres of water pumped through the property. It was just ankle deep everywhere. It was dreadful. So we've got to help Alistair now. I don't know what good I'll be, but I'll give it a crack. See if that Pilates is working. With new carpet making its way into the house, the end is in sight and spirits are high. <laughs> you bugger! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you, mate. We're just done. Very nice. The new carpet looks good, but this doesn't. This is earthquake. I was just looking at it and going, my God, these are not the kind of photographs I thought I'd be taking. Pulling up the carpet has revealed some earthquake damage that was hiding under the rug. I didn't know this was like this. Well, who would? Till he pulled it up. The cracked wall is shared with the garage, so Prue pops over to investigate. It's slightly pulled away, just ever so slight. We've realised in pulling up the carpets and things, we've now got quite a bit of damage to the foundation in that room. It's already been paid out, but of course there's more extensive damage than anybody ever knew. Now we have to reactivate that old grey Sputnik, the EQC. And with that... See you, beautiful. It's carpets for the unit, claims for EQC... I've got a few cobwebs. ..and cobwebs for Prue. Prue successfully relit the unit with a brand new water cylinder and carpets, but at last report was still awaiting on word from the EQC. In Wellington, the leaseholder of a flat has done the dirty on her flatmates, accusing half of them of being squatters. But in reality, she's been pocketing the rent money herself. Jared Buck from Trust Property is picking up the pieces. He's recently been paying nothing. Paying nothing at all? Yes. Oh, wow. Now Jared is getting to the bottom of things. The former leaseholder's whereabouts are unknown and the remaining flatmates never got the message that they needed to be out of the house as well. We'll get some recycle bags in here, start bagging up clothes. We can start making it look as though the place is a little bit more presentable and uh, make some headway with the place. I'm hoping to be out of here today, but... So by the looks of this, that'll take up quite a lot of our week. Oh, MC Hammer, lovely. Yeah, every day is new. It sort of uh, keeps, a, keeps a job interesting. If doing the housework was an Olympic sport, Jared might be accused of taking performance-enhancing drugs. Yeah, we're just taking a few photos just to protect ourselves. That way we don't get any dispute about whether we've been taking stuff, whether we've been breaking stuff. He's had every opportunity to get in contact to be able to move the stuff out himself. Getting in touch with the inhabitant of this room has been difficult. And whatever quest he's currently on, it isn't the same one as Jared. Oh, the room's clear, the last couple of items. Actually not as heavy as it looks. Yeah, we're all done. Hopefully the viewing on Sunday goes well and that we uh, get some nice tenants in there that don't end up being a problem like these guys. It's now the day before the viewing, and while the property is nearly good to go, the former leaseholder who disappeared with all the rent money is still proving elusive. Our priority is to, to try and track down because we are aware that um, she has been the one that's been uh, stealing the, the rent money um, from the flatmates and not paying anything through to us. 
Yeah, hopefully the, the, all the rooms are nice and tidy. Apart from a few stubborn stains, the house is pretty much ready to receive viewers. Yeah, we forgot to clean that off when, when we were here earlier. It should come off with, with some terps, but yeah, permanent marker. It was a little bit stupid. And it looks like the writing's on the wall for the rent thief as well. Oh, it looks like someone's open mail. Having a, a work and in income number can be quite useful when we apply for an attachment order to her benefit. Trust Property Management were able to secure an attachment order of $30 per week against name and start the process of recovering the missing monies.